I can't believe after all this time our paths crossed again. Listen, I can explain my version of what happened in the cannibal capital back then. Rook, that is irrelevant. I understand the need to build a reputation. You did what you thought you had to do. But actions are more important than stories. Your part to play in the downfall of the Holy Nation and what you are doing now to combat the United Cities is what I am interested in. Well, I'm glad you understand. So what brings a tech hunter like you here anyways? You mentioned that you have a proposition for me? I consider myself a tech hunter by title only. Many years ago, long before your time, I served under General Jang as a hydraulic knight. We were tasked to combat the cannibals that mysteriously rose up in hordes, overwhelming what is now the Cannibal Plains. I had what you would call a brother in arms. We fought together from the very beginning, and this skeleton was always by my side. Its name was Endor. Not long before the fall of the Second Empire, we were campaigning through the Cannibal Plains, but ambushed by a large group of cannibals, and I saw Endor taken down firsthand, and there was nothing I could do to save my comrade. Many years after the Hydraulic Knights dissolved with the rest of the Second Empire, I heard rumors of a renowned tech hunter that was accompanied by a skeleton that matched the exact description of Endor. How peculiar, I thought. I became a tech hunter because I wanted to see for myself if Endor survived after all of those years. But when looking into it more, I discovered that this tech hunter and skeleton pair mysteriously disappeared, and I was never able to get closure. After giving up, I found myself giving in to old habits, wandering the cannibal plains. I guess you could say fighting cannibals is embedded deep in my circuits. That's when I ran into you for the first time. Now, to your point, I did come here with a proposition. I recently ran into an old friend who has a base in the East. The leader of the anti-slavers goes by the name Tin Fist. When rumors came to us of your intent to take down Tengu, I was asked to find you and bring you back to meet Tin Fist and discuss an alliance. Really? I mean, we can use all the help we can get. We would have begun our campaign already, but we were sidetracked by something more urgent. Ah, yes, the Bugmaster. Your men shared the good news while you were gone. I was certainly surprised to hear that you captured him. That is no easy feat. Tell me about it. My connection to him and that whole situation was surreal to say the least. I want to go with you and see what we can do to help the anti-slavers. But let me ask you something. Before turning the Bugmaster in, he spoke to me through some kind of telepathic link, the same way he supposedly controlled the skin spiders. He said that he was an ancient, and that not even the preservers knew of his true existence. Does any of that make sense to you? Hmm. An ancient, you say? The ancients are the ones that created us skeletons. If what he says is true, his existence greatly predates even my own. Knowledge of the ancients is almost non-existent, other than old legends and ruins of their lost technology. It was destroyed during the Age of Chaos. They abandoned this place long ago. My understanding is that the Preservers were created by the ancients themselves before leaving this moon. The Preservers were a special skeleton model whose purpose was to wander the land, taking account of major events that unfolded and preserve the history of it for if the ancients were ever to return. They were few and rarely seen. It is thought that during the fall of the Second Empire, they were destroyed or shut themselves down like so many other skeletons did. They haven't been seen in centuries. Hmm, I see. Well, if I'm to go with you, we should head out soon. Right. I'm ready when you are. Okay, Fravatar, like we discussed, Tao and I are leaving with our friend and plan on returning in a few days. If everything pans out how I'm hoping, we'll be in an even better position against the United Cities. While I'm gone, you're in charge. Take care of everyone, okay? Don't worry about it, boss. We'll be just fine here. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't expect anything less from you. All right, guys, let's head out. Rook, Tao, and Jinsei moved quickly as a small group. The town of Spring was their destination, and it wasn't exactly nearby, so they wanted to cover as much ground as they could. Tao was Rook's right-hand man, and he wanted them to make this trip together. With his skeleton legs, it wasn't like Tao was going to slow anyone down. 
Brooke still couldn't believe Jinsei was with them. Jinsei was like a legend to him. If fate didn't bring them together long ago, things might have turned out very differently for Rook. And even though they barely knew one another, Rook felt a strong connection towards his skeleton friend, and any help to take on the United Cities would be greatly welcomed. The group traveled through the swamp with ease while Jinsei shared stories of its past. They didn't stop to rest at night and continued moving until the next morning. As they got closer to spring, Rook recognized this area from when he explored the Ashlands long ago. In fact, he was fairly certain that he previously visited Spring without realizing this was the home of the anti-slavers. His thoughts were quickly interrupted as they were jumped by a patrolling group of hostile men in strange uniforms. Jinsei called out, skeleton bandits, while drawing his fragmented axe. Brook and Tao quickly followed suit as the patrolling group converged onto them. The fragmented axe was even heavier than the falling sun, but Jinsei swung it with grace as blades collided in the heat of combat. While Rook and Jinsei were veteran fighters, Tao was still inexperienced in fighting multiple enemies at once. He had to fall back to make sure he wasn't severely wounded. Every swing brought more of the skeleton bandits to the ground until finally, the last one fell. Jinsei left out a laugh of satisfaction after the fight was over while the men patched themselves up. It was a minor interruption, but they continued onwards. The group traveled just a bit longer until they came up to a winding path up a tall mountain. As they rounded the final corner, they saw the guarded entrance to Spring, which was quite hidden from plain sight. Jinsei led them around towards the HQ in the center of town. They stopped outside the entrance and explained that Tinfist was waiting inside by the entryway and that Tao should wait outside while Rook goes in to talk. They agreed and Rook followed Jinsei, filled with anticipation. I'm Tinfist, leader of the anti-slavers. You must be that Rook that everyone's been talking about so much recently. From everything I've heard, I was expecting someone bigger. Funny. Based on everything I've heard, I didn't expect a skeleton so short. Ha! Not afraid to throw a punch back, I see. Good. Listen, word's been traveling fast about your new Raleigh and the army that you've built. Follow me. I want to talk with you about what I had in mind. I think you'll like it. My men are ready to march against the United Cities. I was planning on sieging Tengu's allies one by one and starving him out. Try to get him to surrender. That's an ambitious plan, Rook. But listen, that won't be easy. Tengu has a reputation for being an indulgent fool, but it's all for show. He's actually a brilliant tactician and relies on his opponent to underestimate him. If we are to work together, I know we can do it. But remember, Tangyu might be the leader, but the nobles from each city have great influence over the United Cities as well. On top of that, while the Slaver's Guild supports the United Cities, their resources are virtually unlimited. If your army is as strong as you claim it to be, you can focus on taking out each noble one by one like you're saying, and destroying any slave camps along the way. Meanwhile, my men cut off trade routes to remaining United Cities, limiting their supplies and intercepting their counteroffensive. My men excel at guerrilla tactics and catching the enemy off guard. I have no doubt that my men can take on any of the free cities. If they don't surrender, they'll be crushed. That's the spirit, Rook. This is exactly what we need to finally bring these bastards down. There's just one issue. Before we can begin, I need you to do me a favor. We've been trying to destroy the slave trade for a long time, but Tangu has managed to provoke both the Southern Hive and the Reavers simultaneously. Our spies couldn't figure out what he did exactly, but they both blame us, and they've been raiding my men constantly. We can't make a move and leave ourselves vulnerable. If you want to work together, I need you to help me take out the Queen of the South and Valamon, the leader of the Reavers. If you can do this for me, I will aid you on your quest to bring an end to the United Cities. You're saying you want me to use my resources to clean up your mess? Precisely, Rook. When my men attack the Reavers, we're ambushed by the Southern Hive. Anytime we counterattack the Southern Hive, the Reavers try to pillage us when we're vulnerable. They have us pinned down. They're both watching my every move, but they won't see you coming. <sighs> okay, I understand. I agree then. I'll help you with your problems, and then you help me. Got it? <laughs> After everything I've heard, I knew I could count on you. Jensei will escort you back home. He said he wants to fight alongside you instead of me. You should be honored. It's settled then. Farewell, Rook. I look forward to hearing good news from you next time we meet. Jinsei escorted the two men out the way they came. As they left, Rook updated them. As soon as they arrived back in New Raleigh, they would assemble their forces and march on the Southern Hive. While exiting Spring, Jinsei asked Rook and Tao if they would be okay with a short detour, saying it would only set them back about half a day. Rook was anxious to get back home, but he agreed, and instead of heading west, they traveled north. The land here was harsh and barren, and while their journey was quiet for the moment, it felt almost too quiet. Rook had the sensation that they were being watched, and he told the others to keep their guard up. Not long after, they were attacked by a patrol of Southern Hive drones. Tao charged in towards the Hivers while Jinsei and Rook approached from behind. The Hiver soldiers were no match three against three. In a few quick swings, the enemy was taken out. 
Jinsei told them to keep moving. When you see a Hiver patrol, there are five more you don't see. They left immediately. Jinsei told them it wasn't much further. A few minutes later, they ran into another patrolling group, but these were Reavers instead. Rook now understood that Tin Fist had a good reason to need their help. It seemed like their enemies were all over this area. And while the Reaver patrol was much larger, the three samurai still cut through them with ease. Moments later, Rook's men were standing over a bloody pile of Reaver corpses. They tended to the few wounds they sustained in the fight and continued onward. It seemed like they were out of hostile territory, at least for now. They kept moving at a good pace, but it was starting to get late and the men were feeling tired. Jinsei stopped them and let them know their destination was just ahead. Jinsei led them around the bend of the mountain, moving more slowly and carefully. As they turned the corner, Rook and Tao's eyes lit up as they approached the remains of a massive skeleton embedded in the mountain. Jinsei led them to the foot of the ruins. Rook, Tao, have you heard the legend of Snobe, the behemoth? A behemoth? No, I'm not familiar. I thought not. Long before my existence, thousands of years ago, the ancients were at war. While much of this history has been lost, it is known that the ancients created behemoths, like Snobe. They were machines of destruction and death. In fact, they were so powerful that whatever adversary they were up against, they defeated it. And in the aftermath of the war, the ancients feared what they created and led them all to a crater where they were completely destroyed. The unwavering obedience of the behemoths led them to their demise. All of them were destroyed, except Snobe. The details have been lost in time, Rook, but this much we know to be true. The destruction of the behemoths sparked an uprising of the skeletons against the ancients, and almost all life was lost as a result of the conflict. But Snobe, the only remaining behemoth, sacrificed its life to not only save humanity, but of the skeletons too. Snobe is a revered hero, and skeletons consider this place to be holy ground. You see, Rook, the context is different, but Snobe is a symbol of hope, a light that shone through the darkness and brought salvation to many through its sacrifice. What I see in Snobe, I also see in you. I see it when I hear the whispers through the cities I've traveled through. I see it with your own men as you command them. I even see it with Tin Fist, though this is something they would never admit to. <laughs> I want to fight alongside you, because if you see your dream come to fruition, it will change the fate of this land. Just like how Snoke did so long ago. This is why I brought you here. Try not to forget this, Rook. While there will be much bloodshed, the fate of many helpless lives now look to you for hope. I'm sure you're both tired from the travels. Why don't we set up camp and rest before we depart? The men took Jinsei's advice and cooked meat and rested by a fire. It was peaceful for a brief moment of time, but the smoke attracted unwanted attention. Another group of Reavers attacked, so Rook commanded them to engage. The Reavers forced their slaves to fight with them and were starved and weak. Like many groups before them, they fell to Rook's blade in no time. Rook and Tao were able to rest for a few hours, but wanted to get moving before the sun rose. They put out their campfire and left heading west towards New Raleigh. The journey home was quiet and somber. Rook thought heavily on what Jinsei said and how this would impact everyone. He thought of his long-lost friend, Hot Dog, and his promise that they would one day change the world. Before he knew it, they saw the walls of New Raleigh protecting their home. Once Rook entered through the gate, he was going to rally his forces and march against the Queen of the South and continue to fulfill the promise he made to his friend so long ago. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to thank all my patrons and YouTube members for helping support the channel so I can make content like this. As always, Thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.